Hey everyone, welcome back to another Clip Studio Paint tutorial, per se. Uh, more of an update. Um, so, as you can tell, I haven't posted a video on my channel in quite a while, and that is because I've been working on my comic book. And so here is my comic book. Uh, I have eight pages done, working on the ninth. And so this is where most of my free time has been. And so I haven't had any time to really make any let's plays or clip studio paint tutorials um, now let me show you the epub of my book of what i have so far so here's the cover um it's not going to be color um for some reason when i created the, the cover the first time i used this yellow color i don't know why but uh it will be black and white uh, so here's the inside cover some uh, information about uh, like an introduction to the story and then page one uh, I think I believe you guys have seen page one through uh, four uh, I've shown that on my uh, on my YouTube channel here before so uh, so here's page four uh, I mean page five which is a, a nine panel grid uh, and that's pretty much I think what I'm gonna go with with my comic book it's just gonna be some some variation of a nine panel grid um, where I might combine panels to make one like in that center like here on this page on the left you have uh, three panels but they were uh, three panels each combined to make those uh, landscape kind of uh, views there but so here's the ninth page I'm working on the sixth sixth panel the sixth panel <laughs> and so I'll be showing you guys how I, I do uh, how I create the art for a particular panel so uh, let me just open that up real quick so yeah if you guys uh, see anything um, that you guys want to know how I did in any of my comic book pages um, but oh by the way if you want to see my my comic book um, I am posting the pages as I finish them uh, on a website called Tapas. I'll leave a link in the description uh, to the website. Um, and so when you get to the website, uh, you can click the search bar here, type in Swarm, and I should be the first one there. Swarm Book of Fear. That's my comic book. And so then uh, there's all the pages there. Um, and so you can see everything... Um, that I've created so far and so like if you see something um, that you want to know how I did that in Clip Studio Paint I'll be happy to show you that I create a tutorial video um, and I'll put it on on, uh, on my YouTube channel and so uh, yeah make sure you guys check that out uh, leave a comment and on the video of uh, what you think of it uh, so yeah, so let's get started. So uh, here's page nine that I'm working on, and I'll be on, like I said, on the sixth pa uh, panel. Um, so usually what I do is I, I do like a little rough sketch of, of what I want going on in each particular panel, and along with the the dialogue. And so uh, here we see uh, Gabriel, the main character, or one of the main characters, uh, kind of like with his hands on his hips, looking up. And so what I'm going to do is just dump in the 3D models that I've created for my two characters, Gabriel and Anaya. And yeah, I definitely recommend when you create a character in using 3D models uh, that you save it. That way um, your characters will remain consistent uh, throughout your whole comic book. In fact, that's what I, I use these 3D models well, I actually started like around page three. I started using the 3D models. So page one and two of my comic book, you can kind of tell my art style is a little bit different. Um, but uh, so anyways, yeah. Um, but before I start manipulating that, um, I noticed that um, this panel is kind of similar to the eighth panel, which has Gabriel looking up also. So. I didn't want to um, uh, 
be redundant so I'm going to change his pose I'm, uh, I think I want I want to do is uh, make him look down and then have his uh, like hands in front of him um, so yeah here's the eighth panel where he's he's going to be looking up out of a window so it's going to be from the viewpoint of outside and he's going to be looking up into the sky and then the rain's going to be falling on the window pane so yeah just a slight change of the pose there uh, so there wouldn't be any redundancy so now um, I'm going to click on the uh, the 3d models uh, the, the layer with the 3d models and um, sometimes the controls for uh, the 3d models don't don't necessarily show up uh, now I click the sketch layer kind of with the blue blue line reference but that's that's just something I do um, you don't have to do that but anyway so when you click the 3d model layer sometimes the tools don't show up but if you click this uh, the 3d box here on the side um, you'll see the tools will then appear I don't know why it does this uh, but yeah so this 3d uh, box here this button here will bring back the tools so now you can uh, start moving the camera and manipulating the model how you want so the first thing I do usually is um, just to check my characters I move all the characters uh, so they're even to each other uh, just so I can see that um, that the characters are still proportional to each other so usually what I do is I line up the toes and then uh, I just look at them and say yeah okay they're, they're pretty much uh, still in proportion of how I save them so yeah I, tr I highly recommend saving uh, your characters uh, if you use the 3d models save your characters that way they remain constant uh, throughout the whole comic book and so yeah, I used the 3D models for all those panels there that came before. So I'm just going to make uh, Anaya invisible as I manipulate uh, Gabriel's 3D model. And so um, I'm speeding up this video here so you guys don't have to sit through me um, messing with this 3D model. Now... <laughs> When I get to the uh, end of the pose, um, I notice that this pose is actually the same pose that Anaya is doing in the panel uh, before it, where she's kind of looking down into the side with her hands in that um, I don't know kind of pose. And so, again, to not be redundant, um, I'm going to change Gabriel's pose. So. Here they're in a room and they're they're being quiet as the zombie passes by and as he passes by there's a sigh of relief and then uh, that's when the conversation happens and then so um, Anaya is like I don't know I just showed up I don't know what's going on so she, that's why she has that I don't know kind of pose and Gabriel has a retort of um, I'll tell you what is new uh, seeing people you know covered in bees so he's not really saying he doesn't he shouldn't have a I don't know pose he should have more of a um, a uh, like I'm making a point here uh, I'll tell you I'll tell you what is new you're right so uh, I think what I want to do is give him kind of like a uh, hold, holding his finger up in the air like he's making a point or something so here I'm just uh, manipulating that so that um, it kind of looks natural um, roll the shoulders back a little bit and position the head in such a way that um, she so she's still gonna be standing behind him uh, so he kind of has to look kind of to the to the side there so now I'm just manipulating the fingers here and so I can see there that the hand is kind of in the way it'll be probably blocking Anaya's 3D model so kind of move the hand 
little bit closer to his face just to give enough room for uh, Anaya's uh, 3D model. So here I'm just uh, I'm going to manipulate uh, uh, Anaya's 3D model. And basically right now what I'm doing is trying to figure out uh, how far back behind him she's going to be. Uh, I try to get uh, a realistic kind of distance. Um, and this is all guesswork really. Um, because there's no environment really. It's just a, a 3D plane. So it's kind of like uh, guess. So whatever looks good. So here I'm just trying to manipulate the camera. See what's what's the best uh, angle. And I think something like this is good. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, so the next thing I want to do is uh, put in the text because I want to make sure that the um, the the word balloon is not going to be in the way of the 3D models because that's where my drawing is going to be. So usually I I give it about seven points or seven pixels uh, big for the text, and I use this font called uh, Back Issue. Um, that I got online for free and so uh, here I'm just uh, typing it out um, as I type it out I might make some changes so it might not be exactly as I wrote it but it'll be it'll get the gist and then I highlight it and then I I give it a centered justification so everything's uh, centered uh, you don't want to leave it to the left or right uh, Typically, the comic book uh, speeches are are centered, and you want to make it as uh, vertical as possible. And then uh, add the little tail to to finish it off. And then I play with the, the thickness of the tail. Uh, they're not always the same. Sometimes they're thin. Sometimes they're not. Uh, so it just whatever looks good. Okay, so now I'm manipulating uh, Anaya's 3D model to to be um, how the sketch was, but um, I didn't like the way that her face wasn't showing, so um, I decided to change the pose. I wanted to put uh, her hands to her side, and then she's going to be turning her head towards the right. Uh, so that you can at least get a profile view of Anaya. But right now, um, I'm not too worried about that. I'm just uh, uh, worried or, or going to draw uh, Gabriel. So um, I think uh, right there, that pose is, is okay. Now, I might move it to the left a little bit, but in either case. So now, um, I create a layer and call it uh, line, because this is where my line work is going to be. And so, again, uh, I'm speeding this up for you guys, so you guys don't have to sit through all this. Uh, so, I'm just coloring his hair, and then using the gradient tool to give it that fade, and then uh, use white ink to draw the little strands of hair, so... You can kind of see the flow of the hair and then draw his hand and uh, his clothes and then what I what I like to do is I like to close off the whole drawing so that it's um, it's one complete piece um, so there's like no gaps around the whole border of the drawing and this will help me when I do the coloring um, but before I do that um, let me let me put a background color so you guys can see because I'm going to dump some white paint and you guys can't see it because it has a white background. So let me create a, a background and like the previous panel you'll notice that there's a dark up in the upper left and it kind of gradually fades to white in the lower right and it's also rounded. So I'm going to do the same thing for the next panel except that I'm going to have the dark corner the lower right and the light corner on the upper left 
kind of like a, a reverse. So I'll go to the gradient tool, I'll select the circle pattern, and then um, I'll click the center or the, the bottom uh, right corner, and that'll be the center of the circle, and then I'll just drag the circle out. Um, and this is just hit or miss. Uh, okay, so I want it a little bit darker to be uh, more further out, so I'll just do it again, but increase the circle. And there it goes. So. so that'll be the background. So now I can go back to the line layer where I did the line work. And I can grab the magic wand. And I'll select outside of Gabriel. And so now there's a border around Gabriel. And if I do uh, the inverse, now everything inside Gabriel is selected. Um, and I do this because if you select inside Gabriel... Um, you'll have to select every single piece that's uh, blocked out like his shirt and then his inside shirt then his face and then who knows what other little pieces in his ears and stuff so it's much easier to select outside and then inverse it and then what I do is I expand the selection and this gives a nice border around the whole drawing so then I'll create a new layer and call it color and then I'll select the white paint and then I'll use the bucket tool to dump the paint and then there you have it. Um, so everything in inside Gabriel is painted white and plus you get that nice white border around the, uh, the character. And so now when you go to color uh, his clothes um, then you can select individual pieces. Um, so here I'll select um, his his uh, collared shirt, select all the pieces, um, and then his inside shirt. Now there's some pieces that are missing, but they're so small you can get a pin and just color them in by hand. Um, and then that's it. That's uh, that pretty much colors uh, all of Gabriel. And so now. Um, his shirt has a, a print on it. It's actually a fist. Um, if you guys are familiar with the, a band called uh, Rage Against the Machine, uh, that's what they had here. So um, I just pulled it off the internet. It's a, a PNG file, and I'll just resize it. And then uh, when I did, this is all eyeball. Um, there's no specific size or anything. I just try to get it. So that it looks the same as the previous other panels and stuff. So then I'll rasterize that layer. And then so you'll notice that some of the the design falls underneath the collared shirt. So what I'll do is I'll go to the line layer. Oh, well, first I lower the opacity to 70 so it looks kind of faded. And then I'll go to the line layer and I'll select the uh, collared shirt again. And so those areas uh, on the collared shirt... Um, if I move back down to the fist layer and I use my eraser, it will only erase what's uh, overlapping on the collared shirt and it will leave the stuff in the center alone. So easy enough. And so now um, I'll add some shadows. I'll create a, a new layer um, above the color, the color layer. And I'll use the uh, lasso tool to um, just to create some um, sh some shapes of where the shadows will be. So I'll just call it shade, and then uh, I'll grab the lasso tool, and I'll use the lasso tool like a um, like a pin. Um, and so I'll just uh, lasso some areas here where I think the shadow would be so usually um usually most of my drawings i just you know put the the light source uh, right above them so that the shadow will be on the bottom side so it's kind of simple so um i know it's not always going to be on the top but for me it always is <laughs> and it just makes things easier that way so um now usually also i select individual um, items that are different colors so like his uh, collared shirt and his undershirt are two different shades of gray but 
uh, I got lazy here and I just selected his whole lower half and I just figured I'll just give it one color but usually the the darker grays uh, when I do the shadows will be even darker and then the lighter shades of gray will have just slightly darker than that so but so here it's good enough I'll just I'll just go with that I mean So that's that's good. So and so here I'll just add some more other details. Now I'll I'll go, I'll change in between either the the paint bucket um, to spill the paint in if I want a hard edge or uh, the gradient tool if I want a smooth uh, gradient. Um, I'll do a, a video a tutorial video on the gradient tool so you guys. Uh, can get some tips on how I use it so there it is it's just simple shading cell shading so nothing too fancy and so that's the uh, complete um, coloring well the complete drawing of, of Gabriel uh, for this particular panel now um, that whole process there took in real time one hour um, and so then I'll just do the same thing for Anaya. Um, like I said, I might move her 3D model over to the to the left a little bit, uh, just so I can see her face a little bit more. But in either case, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. Um, and uh, yeah. So if you guys have any questions of how I do things in my comic book, uh, feel free to leave those uh, questions in the comments down below. Um, I'll either try to answer them in the comments or I'll make a video. And again, um, the website Tapas, um, I'll be posting the pages as, as I complete them. Um, I'll leave a link, a link in the description so you guys can check that out if you want to read it. Uh, in, I'll be happy to hear any feedback if you had any or just, you know, tell me you liked it or whatever, whatever you want to say. Um, so, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I uh, hope you guys learned something. And again, um, if you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one.